Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. My name is Brian, and we talk about Blu-rays here. And for this video, uh, I am going to talk about some Kino Lorber titles for the month of September. Just spotlighting some stuff that I think uh, looks interesting from uh, Kino and Code Red. And there's a there's a few here to talk about, but let's get into this. So we'll start with this one. Skull Duggery from 1970, uh, directed by Gordon Douglas, um, who goes way back to the 50s, uh, stuff like Them, and uh, a director that I dig, definitely. This is a very rare film. This is a movie that, for a long time, I don't think even had a VHS release, so it's been out of the conversation outside of folks that have gotten a handle on some bootlegs maybe and it's a very interesting movie maybe not wholly successful for me personally but I'm glad I saw it and it sort of deals with this uh, expedition taken on by uh, some scientists um, oh and it's a brand new 2k master and it's a widescreen movie it's 235 to 1 so it's looking better than it's ever looked um, so that's kind of cool too. But um, an expedition into the interior uh, interior of Papua New Guinea comes across a tribe of ape-like people, the Tropies, who may or may not be ancestors of early man. However, the influence of modern man is to have devastating effects upon these forgotten people. Um, yeah, so Burt Reynolds is in this movie, which I think is really intriguing. Susan Clark as well. You can see both of them there. Susan Clark is one of the sort of scientists that goes on the expedition. Reynolds is one of the guys who just happens to want to come along, um, you know, mostly for fame and glory kind of and money kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, then they discover this tribe of like ape-like creatures that are very humanistic and it becomes this whole other story and not to go too far down what it becomes, but there are, there is some courtroom stuff. There's some like, are these creatures human or not? And there's some parties that would like them to be declared not human for their own purposes. Anyway, uh, so it's a really interesting movie from that point of view because it starts one way and shifts and turns into something else. And I can't say I've seen too many films just like it. Um, so it's pretty unique in that sense. Uh, a bit disturbing in parts, certainly, too. Um, but I'm glad I was able to finally see it. And this one includes an audio commentary by film historians Howard S. Berger and C. Courtney Joyner, uh, as well as uh, Sergio Mims, who's not mentioned on the back here. But um, I'm a big fan of Sergio Mims, and I'm glad he was a part of this track, too. So you have a three-way track. Um and yeah, very interesting, rare film and a title I've always loved uh, because it's a word that one of my old video store compatriots would use all the time. And I think it's a good word. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's Skullduggery. We're well, starting with a rare movie. And then we're going to move into a little martial arts sort of adventure movie, Golden Needles. This is from 1974. This is directed by the great Robert Klaus, who, of course, did uh, things like, you know, Enter the Dragon, Game of Death, uh, Deadly Eyes, one of my favorite uh, animal attack movies. And this one is really interesting because it's, um, you know, it's part martial arts movie, part sort of almost supernatural thriller because uh, it's about this statue that is being sought by uh, a group of people. It's almost like a Maltese falcony kind of thing where they want to get the statue because it shows the pressure points uh, that will allow someone to have almost unlimited healing power if they hit these certain pressure points, I guess. Um, this is a brand new 2K Master, which is cool. Uh, it says, um, oh, he directed Jim Cotta as well. Uh, suspense story of a priceless ancient Chinese statue that is uh, pursued halfway across the world. The Legend of the Golden Statue, which contains seven youth-restoring acupuncture needles. So it's the needles thereafter, too, obviously. 
uh, promise the, promises the owner health and incredible vigor, but can also deliver a painful death. Um, so Joe Don Baker plays this guy who's sort of hired by, um, you know, this woman uh, played by Elizabeth Ashley to try and help him her retrieve the statue. Then we find out maybe there's more people involved, like a very conniving Burgess Meredith. Uh, this cast is really, really fun. Um, and then, of course, Jim Kelly gets involved. And Jim Kelly is an old buddy of Joan on Baker's. And so there's lots of martial arts butt kicking that st starts to happen in the last uh, third of the movie. Um, but it's a fun, you know, sort of international adventure movie with a good cast. And it's from the director of Enter the Dragon. So you have some decent action scenes. Here is the alternative artwork for that. Nice slip cover, as you can see. This one has an audio commentary by uh, Howard S. Berger and Chris uh, Poggi po Poggiali. 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 Chris Poggiali. Uh, Temple of Shocks, Chris Pajali, um, a great commentator who I'm seeing pop up more and more on Kino tracks, and uh, I enjoy his work a good deal, so I like seeing him pop up. Um, and there's, let's see here, radio spots, and that's kind of it. Uh, obviously, newly commissioned artwork. Ah. Okay, next up, we have... Uh, something from a director I like very much, John Badham's uh, film Bird on a Wire from 1990. And I hadn't seen this movie probably since 1990 or 91. Um, it's PG-13 rated. I might have seen it in the theater. I feel like I did. Maybe I saw it on video. Uh, but I didn't remember it at all. And it's an intriguing mm, quasi-Hitchcockian, if you want, sort of thriller about a guy played by Mel Gibson who has, I'm just going to spoil a little bit of this. Um, he's been in the witness relocation program for a long time. And he suddenly gets in a situation where an old girlfriend slash fiance played by Goldie Hawn spots him at a, um, a gas station where he's working and he has to sort of call into the FBI and, and try and get help, trying to get relocated again. Apparently it's happened several times. Um, and in doing so, he sort of sets off a chain of events that allows the people that he doesn't want to find him uh, align to find him. And that deals with a crooked FBI guy played by Stephen Tobolowski and two ex, I guess, drug enforcement agents that he... Um, testified against one of them and can testify against the other so they both want him dead uh, the one that was in jail is played by David Carradine and the one that uh, is his partner is played by the great Bill Duke so they're great villains Carradine gets out of jail he's all scraggly and long haired and stuff um, and then he cleans up and so yeah they're sort of basically chasing after Mel Gibson's character and Goldie Hawn who hasn't seen him in years thought he was dead uh, has moved on, became a lawyer, gotten, you know, got a, a new bow and now she's sort of pulled back in and he kind of has to go back through his life and some of his former, uh, identities to try and find an address book that will help him get to the FBI guy that he thinks can really help him. Um, but it's fun. It's John Badham and he makes fun Hollywood movies. It has a really f enjoyable climax in a zoo but it's like a high tech zoo. Um, like it's like a big enclosed uh, space where they put all these animals. It's like a show almost. And uh, they have a big sort of fight in that area at the end. And it's, it's pretty fun. So um, yeah, it's it had been a long time since I'd seen it and uh, it, it all came back, but uh, but yeah, you know, Mel Gibson and Goldie, uh, fun together and Carradine and Bill Duke, you can't do better as villains. Uh, same with Steven Tobolowsky. Um, this one has a brand new, uh, HD master from a 2k scan of the inner positive. And it has, I believe a new, uh, audio commentary with director, John Badham, producer, second unit director, Rob Cohen and film historian, filmmaker, Daniel Creamer. So always good to hear the real filmmakers thoughts. And I like John Badham a lot. There's some good um, flying stuff in this. Just a short stint of helicopter 
and plain stuff that made me think of um, Blue Thunder. Um, not quite on the level of the crazy stunt flying in that film, but uh, that's another John Badden film I like. Uh, next up, we have Arabesque. This is from 1966. This is produced and directed by Stanley Donnan and is very similar to uh, Charade uh, and is three years after that film. Even has music by um, by the great uh, Henry Mancini as well. But this story has to do with a um, malevolent dude who... Um, enlists the help of an American hieroglyphics professor played by Gregory Peck to try and help him decipher this um, inscription that's like the MacGuffin of the movie and so he gets pulled into it and he's in this uh, you know big house trying to um, sort of trap there as a hostage almost trying to decipher this hieroglyphics and he comes upon Sophia Loren's character who lives in the house and is seemingly sort of with the bad guy and then it becomes a thing where like he maybe is gonna break away from everything with her like maybe she's gonna help him maybe she can be trusted maybe she can't um but it sort of is that every man falls into a Hitchcockian adventure kind of story you know thriller and um it's pretty fun it's not as good as charade by any means uh it's not as good as mirage if you're looking at other you know Hitchcock adjacent film starring Gregory Peck uh it it doesn't quite uh get there but I I do think it's interesting and uh I remember I'd caught part of it on TCM years ago and never saw the whole thing but always was like that looks like another charade kind of thing I'd, I want to see that and so I finally got to see it on this disc and um it looks good um it has an audio commentary from Howard S. Berger, Steve Mitchell and Nathaniel Thompson something called Music by Mancini, an archival featurette with Henry Mancini and nationally syndicated uh, columnist Leonard Feather, uh, theatrical trailer, teaser, and TV spots and stuff. Um, but a fun one for Hitchcock fans, you know, and 60s fans. I mean, they, they, they push it up there. Ultra mod, ultra mad, ultra mystery. It definitely has a very 60s vibe about it. Um, not quite Austin's, Austin Powers level throwback kind of 60s, but... You know, it definitely is aware that it it's taking place in that time, and you and you can see it and you can feel it. Um, but Sophia Loren and Gregory Peck are good together. I like Gregory Peck when he's sort of a smart aleck. Like he plays a lot of very self serious characters, and I like it when his characters have a sense of humor. And this guy uh, definitely does. Um, so that's a worthwhile one as well. And we have some more of the um, Vincent Price. Movies. Uh, I talked about some of those for the uh, August group. This is obviously all the September titles. And so these, I believe, are all available as part of some of the Scream Factory um, Vincent Price Blu rays sets. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure how much more you're getting here in terms of extras. Um, this one has a lot of commentaries. Um, so yeah, anyway, Tomb of Lygia, it's part of the post cycle directed by Corman and produced by him. And I think this is one of the stronger entries in the whole post cycle. And I know, um, I believe Scorsese is a big fan of this one. It might be his favorite, uh, Poe film. It might be one of his favorite Corman films for all I know. Um, but it's, um, uh, oh, and Robert Town, uh, wrote it, which is cool. Uh, it's, Horror in England, Edgar Allan Poe's most terrifying tale of passion, possession, and perfect evil. When a dead wife sinks her claws into immortality and comes back as a ferocious feline, she leads her husband's, Vincent Price's, new bride on a deadly game of cat and mouse. And when the fur starts flying, she soon learns that even in death, she can land on her feet. Um, so, yeah, very interesting old wife haunting new wife kind of movie. But I've always dug Vincent Price in this one, and his shades are pretty great as well. Um, as you can see, this is a stacked disc in terms of commentaries. You've got one from, of course, Tim Lucas, always the highest of quality tracks. Uh, then you get one from Corman himself, and you get one from actress Elizabeth Shepard, who um, I believe plays the new wife in this film. So you get three commentaries, which is lovely. I don't think the Screen Factory had all three of those. I could be wrong. You can check online, but um, I 
think there might be some new stuff there. Maybe it's the Lucas commentary. Um, but anyway, uh, a good uh, Poe film, a good Corman film. And then we have one more Vincent Price movie. Um, this is Theater Blood from 1973. Um, this one's a little bit campy in some parts, but uh, I think it's fun. Um, it uh, has Price as a... <laughs> He's looking pretty pretty crazy in this. Um, a thrilling tour de force performance as a small-time actor planning big-time revenge. This dramatically delicious concoction is an equal mixture of horror, comedy, and Shakespeare that'll please just about everyone, critics included. After years of suffering, deadly reviews, hammy Shakespearean actor Edward Lionheart decides it's curtains for his critics, bumping off his, distra uh, his detractors, with uh, executions inspired by the Bard, um, Lionheart stages a beheading in the manner of Cymbeline, a stabbing inspired by Julius Caesar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not going to give away every death in this, but you get the idea. He's a he's a hammy actor who's kind of um, had enough and starts killing off the critics. So there's definitely a very um, you know tongue in cheek kind of nature to this film. Although I do remember some of the deaths being pretty gnarly. Uh, and I just, I got to say, I love when Vincent Price plays a hammy actor. Um, the character he plays in His Kind of Woman, a guy named Mark Cardigan, one of my favorite character names ever, really, honestly, um, is also a hammy actor. And I think it's one of my favorite performances from him. So this is, uh, you know, another of that ilk. And I dig that about it. And, uh, this also includes a uh, supporting cast with folks like Diana Rigg, um, Jack Hawkins, uh, Robert Morley, and uh, Harry Andrews. So a lot of folks you'll, you'll recognize, you know, throughout. But this one definitely has a cult following uh, that I'm aware of, and it's been released several times. I feel like um, Twilight Time put it out, and then Arrow put it out, and then... It may be part of the Scream Factory box sets as well. I'm not sure. Uh, so this may be one that you can get some of these extras elsewhere. Um, I think I think not, though. I think this audio commentary by screenwriter-producer Alan Spencer is new. The audio commentary by film historians David DelVal and Nick Redman is obviously older. Nick Redman, of course, from Twilight Time, so that's from that Twilight Time release. And then you have the trailers from hell with Alan Spencer. So you, you have a new commentary on this one for sure. Uh, I don't think this is a new transfer. You have uh, some alternate artwork there. So that's a nice looking Vincent Price disc. Um, along the lines of uh, Arabesque is this one. Uh, Jack Hawkins, who I just mentioned uh, is in Theater Blood, is also in this, and as well as Cliff Robertson and uh, Marissa Mel. And this is kind of a... I want to say this is one of those sort of spoofy spy films. Uh, this is a brand new 2K Master. It says the fun starts when they take their cloaks and daggers off. Uh, and it's directed by Basil Dearden, uh, who I'm a big fan of. And I've talked about him on the channel before. Done a lot of great films over the years. And this is one that I have not seen uh, the acclaimed director of The Captive Heart, The Blue Lamp, Pool of London. Pool of London is great, by the way. Um, and that's a Kino Blu-ray. Um, comes this tongue-in-cheek spy caper film. Uh, the British government is in negotiations with the Middle East uh, oil-rich nation of Ramut to allow uh, in British drilling agencies. But Ramut withdraws from the talks, leaving the British desperate. British Colonel uh, Drexel, that's Jack Hawkins, is enlisted to a covert operation to kidnap Ramut Prince Jamil Christopher Witte, uh, playing that role, in order to force an oil agreement between the countries. Drexel brings in American uh, David Fraser, that's Cliff Robertson, to assist, but Fraser finds someone else has plans for Jamil. Uh, Marissa Mel, uh, who's in Danger Diabolic, uh, Bill Fraser and Charles Gray co-star in this rollicking spy spoof. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael Ralph and the legendary William, William Goldman adapted the screenplay from the novel uh, Castle Minerva by Vincent Canning. So you have a co-scripted William Goldman uh, working on this one. So that's pretty cool. William Goldman working on a 
film directed by a British director. I'm very intrigued by this. Um, so definitely going to check this one out. This one has a commentary again by Howard Berger and Chris Bajali. And, uh, I think this one hasn't been, I mean, it's, I think it got an MOD DVD, but I don't think it's gotten much in the way of, um, a straight DVD release. So this one might be a little rarer, uh, just eyeballing it. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. And then we have another film called Masquerade, which I remember a bit more, but this is from 1988, a much different movie starring Rob Lowe, Meg Tilly, Kim Cattrall, uh, Doug Savant. Um, and this one is, uh, about, it's sort of like a sexually charged mystery about a wealthy woman who falls for the wrong man. Olivia Meg Tilly, uh, seems to have it all good looks, good breeding and $200 million fortune. But the serene facade of her East Hampton seaside estate, uh, is missing something passion. Enter Tim Rob Lowe, the sexy sailing instructor and playboy. Who's not ashamed of sleeping with his boss's insatiable wife, Kim Cattrall, uh, or social climbing for sport. And when he sets his sights on Olivia, she falls under the seductive spell of this handsome stranger, unaware that he has his eye on more than just her beauty. So you know exactly what we're... This is a film noir, um, a dude fatal kind of thing. And, uh, you know, will Meg Tilly ultimately, um, you know, lose out to this guy? Will he end up killing her for her money? Who knows? Uh, but I do like this cast. I'm a big Meg Tilly fan. I feel like you know, I'm, I'm bummed that she had like a shorter window of time where she was popular, but I have always enjoyed her. I love her sister as well. Jennifer Tilly's great, but, um, Meg, I just really would have liked to have seen in a few more movies, even though she had a really hot period in the nineties, I feel like late eighties, uh, in nineties, um, where she was getting work, maybe more eighties. Uh, Psycho 2 is the one for me that I'll always remember. Like I saw her first in that and I was immediately struck. Um, but anyway, uh, Kim Cattrall as well. So that'll be fun. Uh, this one has a commentary by director Bob Swain, who I don't know, but again, I always appreciate a commentary from the actual director. It has music by John Barry, as you can see there, which is also great. And it's written by Dick Wolf, TV's Dick Wolf. Uh, so that is something as well. Uh, next up, we have a Western. I had this on VHS for years, and I never got a chance to watch it. Um, it's an Avco Embassy movie produced by Joseph E. Levine, and uh, it is directed by Bernard L. Kowalski. And uh, it is based on a story by Richard Carr and screenplay by Clifford Newton Gould. I don't know everybody involved in this, but I do know uh, David Jansen, Gene Seberg, Lee J. Cobb, uh, and I'm a fan of all of them. So this is a 4K uh, restoration from the original camera negative, and David Jansen plays a man who was apparently tricked into enlisting in the Confederate Army and is later thrown into like a hellish stockade for desertion charges. And when he breaks out of the prison camp, he sets out to kill the man in yellow boots who bamboozled him into signing the enlistment papers. And that is Lee J. Cobb. So it's basically David Jansen versus Lee J. Cobb in sort of a revenge movie. Um, however, uh, after accidentally killing a Confederate officer played by David Carradine, uh, he finds himself pursued by a gang of vicious bounty hunters intent on collecting the reward put up by the dead officer's widow. That's Seberg. Um, and it says TV veteran Bernard L. Kowalski uh, directed this dark and gritty Western with wonderful supporting turns by James Booth, uh, Pedro Armendariz Jr., uh, Bo Hopkins, always love to see Bo Hopkins, uh, and Richard Anderson, Diane Ladd, and Matt Clark. Matt Clark is a, one of those that guys. When you see him, you'll be like, I've seen that guy in so many movies, and he's usually pretty unassuming, so he kind of blends in but I love to see him in, in anything. So, um, yeah, this one may I also have had a DVD, but I only was ever aware of the VHS tape, which is why I hung on to it. And of course it is a two, three, five to one film. So I'm glad I didn't watch it on VHS. It would have lost a lot. Um, 
in that transfer. But this, again, 4K restoration from the original camera negative. So uh, looking forward to checking this one out. David Jansen looking real tough with his beard, one of the all-time great voices in cinema. Jansen's gargly, like gargling razor blades kind of voice. I love it. Um, a couple from Code Red to close this out. We have uh, Guiana, Cult of the Damned. And this stars uh, Stuart Whitman. Also, Gene Barry, uh, John Ireland, Jennifer Ashley, and Bradford Dillman with a special appearance by Joseph Cotton. And this is uh, co-written and produced and directed by Renee Cardona Jr. And it is apparently a takeoff on the um, sort of cult stuff. Uh, well, here, I'll, I'll just read the Brace Yourself for Guiana, Cult of the Damned. The infamous 1970 Mexican-American exploitation drama written and directed by Rene Cardona Jr. Shot in Mexico, this trashy film was based on the Jonestown Massacre, one of the grisliest true story incidents in the 20th century. Some of the names have been slightly changed, and even the town name is slightly different, but this is the Jim Jones cult massacre story in all its Kool-Aid glory. Uh, so... It says, legendary actor Stuart Whitman stars as Reverend James Johnson, the cult leader of Johnsontown. <laughs> they really went all out changing the names. Um, where the real-life massacre took place. Um, so anyway, that's it's a Jonestown massacre, um, thinly veiled kind of thing. So there you get to see Stuart Whitman in his uh, garb there and some crazy cult stuff happening over there. But um, this one looks interesting. You know, it's Code Red. It's obviously got some something of a cult following between the cast and the uh, subject matter. And this says it's a brand new 2K Master, which is cool. It also has an isolated score and effects track, which is nice. Uh, Code Red does do that from time to time. Uh, but that's it in terms of extras. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you're into sort of cult movies in that sense, um, this one might be up your alley. Uh it also has uh, Yvonne DiCarlo and Hugo Stiglitz. Uh, and did I mention Jennifer Ashley? I don't know if I did. Um, so it's got a really good supporting cast. Um, yeah, I did mention Jennifer Ashley. But uh, Yvonne DiCarlo and Hugo Stiglitz is a nice uh, additions to the cast that I already mentioned. So I'm definitely into this one. It's got a lot of cult vibes to it besides the ob obvious subject matter, just the actors and everybody involved. Uh, and then last but not least, we have a movie called Death Ring, and this is from 1992. Stars um, some interesting folks. You have, uh, <laughs> I love how they go, Norris, McQueen, Swayze, Drago. Okay, wait, who are they talking about? They're talking about Mike Norris. They're talking about uh, Chad McQueen and Don Swayze, and of course, Billy Drago uh, right there on the cover. Um, no Mercy, No Rules. Uh, so this one, I don't think I'd even heard of this movie before it was announced, to be honest. This one slipped completely by me, and it says it's the roughest manhunt ever when the screen's greatest action stars join forces in this grueling battle to the death when ex-Special Forces agent Matt Collins, that's Mike Norris, uh, wins a survivalist competition. He becomes the toughest man alive, the perfect fodder for perverse millionaire Danton Vax, that's Billy Drago. Ooh, I like the idea of Billy Drago playing a uh, perverse millionaire. He's usually a like scumbag, you know, uh, hitman um, whose annual manhunt attracts the most vicious killers in the world. As the diabolical competition begins, Collins, uh, Skylord Harris, uh, that's Chad McQueen, um, and John Blackwell, that's Don Swayze, uh, must kill their attackers one by one or be added to the fatal list of prey. Um, so, you know, yet another take on the most dangerous game. This kind of movie's been made over and over and over over the years. Um, I'm hoping this one is a little um, a little gnarlier, a little actionier, if that's a thing, because of those involved. Um, it looks interesting. There's Chad McQueen looking tough on the bottom there. Uh, and there's Don Swayze. Um, so yeah, I'm curious about this one. Code Red, you know, it's it's definitely, again, got some cult appeal to it. This is a brand new 2K Master as well. So uh, hats off for that. And uh, I'm going to be definitely checking out both of these Code Red titles I mentioned. Both look very 
interesting and fun. So that will do it for this month's, uh, the September uh, spotlight for Kino Lorber. Keep watching uh, KinoLorber.com and their socials for more announcements of, you know, more fascinating and intriguing uh, Kino Lorber Blu-rays and look for more breadth along the lines of this group. You've got all kinds of different stuff represented here and that is usually the case in a given month with Kino. So always happy to talk about uh, the stuff they have going on and I will do so again next month. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.